bisection method okay we'll uh, go at them one by one now let us understand how bisection method helps us to actually solve a transcendental equation for example you are given an equation y is equal to fx is equal to 0 now this is an equation which is given to you and let us say the graph is shown in this figure let us say as you can see on the graph this is the root this is the root I don't know the exact location of the root let us say this is x comma 0 I will randomly choose two points I would choose a point here and I would choose a point here okay, let us say this point is A and let us say this point is B now I would check the sine of the function at point A so the sine of the function at point A is but obviously a negative sign so this means the function is negative at point A at point B yes the function value will be positive this means in going from A to B the function is cutting through the x-axis so therefore a root will lie in this interval this means your initial approximation is is that your root lies between a and b okay now this is just an approximation we don't know we what is the value of this x okay now and this was because at f of a the function was negative and at f of b the function was positive now this is this is a required check to be made okay now let us now come to the first approximation of the value as by the name the first approximation would be x1 x1 would be a plus b by 2 you would find a value x1 which would be nothing but the algebraic mean of the two points initially taken okay now we know that f of a was negative and f of b was positive now this point would lie between A and B so we will have to check the function sign at this point as well let us say the function point or the, or the function sign is negative this means x1 is also you know yielding a negative value of the function this means let us say x1 lies somewhere here this is your x1 so I can see that the function value at x1 is a negative value okay this means now I can omit this point and my new interval would be x1 comma p okay so now you can see that I initially approximated this point now in the second point I have jumped closer to the root I am inching you know closer to the root in every step now in the second approximation we would find out x2 x2 would be nothing but x1 plus b by 2 let us say now let us look at the sign values fx1 was negative f of b is positive and let us find out the function sign at x2 let us say it is positive for x2 as well this means this is your x2 and we can clearly see that the function value is positive this means now the root will lie in this new interval okay sorry 
okay now just uh, concentrate on this uh, these these intervals x1 uh, function at x1 is negative function at x2 is positive function at b is positive this means there is no root within this interval okay so you can omit this point and you can only take these two points so this means the new interval would now become x1 comma x2 so in this step again we have come so close to the root right now let us find out another approximation that is the third approximation that is x3 this would give you x1 plus x2 by 2 okay now you will again check the function sign so these were the starting signs for this approximation that is negative at x1 and positive at x2 now let us find out the function sign at x3 let us say x3 lies somewhere here this is x3 the function sign at x3 is but obviously positive okay so let us say this is positive so now i can omit x2 point so the new interval is x1 comma x3 so the new interval is x1 comma x3 now you have see you, you can see that the interval is becoming shorter you know in every step it is coming down in the length the l interval length is coming down in each approximation or in each iteration that you perform now let us find out another approximation one more x4 you would get x1 plus x3 by 2 so let us say x4 will be here so this is a negative value now the, in the interval is x4 and x3 now let us now come to another point that you need to do these steps these kind of steps till what time okay let us say your x3 uh, value was 1.000 sorry 1.00224 this is the value that you got as x3 now x4 let us say the value you got for x4 was 1.0 0 2 2 3 suppose these are the two consecutive values that you got okay now you can see that these two consecutive values are same up to four decimal places isn't it so when you get two consecutive values you know equal up to four decimal places or three decimal places whichever accuracy level is specified to you in the question so you would stop your iteration process at x4 and you would say that the root is equal to 1.00223 okay this is just an indicative value just taking out of my head that uh, when you have three or four decimal places as same in the you know consecutive iterations you would stop your iteration process right there okay so this was your bisection method in which we start off with an initial approximation this was your initial approximation and then in each step you just keep on doing the uh, you keep on taking the algebraic mean and you keep on eliminating one uh, point from the previous interval and then you started off with this interval and then you kept on decreasing the length of the interval finally you reach very close to the exact root okay and when you have two consecutive iterations resulting in uh, decimal three to, three to four decimal points as same numbers uh, you would stop your uh, iteration process there okay so this was your bisection process